Good morning, everybody. Um, everybody wants to see what's under this cover, so I'm going to make you listen to a couple of brand propaganda things before we unveil it, which is what we do, right, to keep you guys listening. Um, Dodge brand. Dodge has been absolutely tearing up its centennial year. If you think back, we launched the Durango the end of last year. Ron Burgundy campaign put the brand in the forefront of the general market. Everybody started talking about the brand. Fast forward, we go to the New York Auto Show, we unveil the Charger, the Challenger. Everybody's talking about that. Right after that, we unveil the Hellcat, literally. All hell breaks loose after that. Right after that, we have the drive event. A lot of you here in the room get a chance to drive the cars. The conversations change a little bit, and it's, yeah, the Hellcat's the most amazing thing ever, but the whole lineup is absolutely incredible. From the $27,000 SXT that gets 30 miles per gallon and 300 horsepower, to the RT, to the Scat Pack, to the Shaker, and then of course, obviously, to the Hellcat. Amazing performance, zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds, quarter mile in 11.2 seconds, and 199 mile an hour top speed. Really, really cool stuff. As the conversation is changing, the brand is growing in momentum in the general marketplace. Last month, Dodge brand, number one searched automotive brand on Google. Number one, Honda, Toyota, Ford, nope, Dodge. Dart, Charger, Challenger, three of the top 10 trending vehicles. The conversation is changing about the brand because of things like this, because of what cars like this can do for a brand and elevate a brand. So Charger, absolutely amazing car, right? There's a car that we're gonna show you today that I think you can guess what it is. This is a car that most brands would never bring to market. This is a car that really absolutely does not have a business case for it. This is a car that doesn't fit in any automotive segmentation. This is a car that no customer has ever asked us to build. But sometimes you need to disregard the data. Sometimes you need to stop listening to the focus groups. Sometimes you need to build a car that just defines itself. Sometimes you need to build a car that redefines the preconceived definition of practicality. Because in the most extreme way ever, it actually is. The 2015 Dodge Charger SRT Hellcat. This is the quickest, fastest, and most powerful sedan in the world. There is no asterisk underneath that statement. Most powerful, 707 horsepower. Fastest, 204 mile per hour top speed. Quickest, bone stock, as you see it here today, street tires, NHRA certified, 11.0 second quarter mile time. Redefines practicality. I'm gonna let Mark take you through the design elements. Thanks, Tim. It's, uh, I think it's pretty awesome. It's so nice, you know, as a designer, I look at these things for, you know, sometimes years, and it's like, yeah, 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 can't talk about it, can't show it, so it's finally, it's like, ah, here it is. So it's really great to be here. And it's so fitting to me to be out here on Woodward. You know, I, I come out here on weekends. Um, I'm driving a Hellcat, so sorry if I kicked your butt. Um, but uh, it's, it's great because there's so much car passion and, you know, old Mopars, Chargers and Challengers and that running around. And it's that passion that people have for Mopars and for Dodge products, you know, historic vehicles, even late model vehicles that, that feeds us. Um, you know, working with Tim and Russ and all the guys behind these cars, we, we feed off of that and we feel it. And as a designer, it's awesome because we're very much, we're so emotional about things. We're so visual. So to be out here on Woodward with all of these awesome Mopar products running around, it's, it's very fitting that, that we're here and we're able to show this car here today. 
Um, so when we started with the SRT, we, we had a great platform to build from. Obviously, with the, with the intro of the, charge, the 2015 Charger at the New York Auto Show, that car had a lot of presence. There were some great things done to it. The face has so much presence to it. Um, there were things done to the C-pillar. C-pillar was pulled rearward about four inches. It gives it a more coupe-like uh, profile. The plan view or the corners of the fascias were tucked in a little bit. It visually shrinks the car. Uh, as well as the door, the scallop. Just, just changing the, some simple lines on the car really modernized it, but it was still, it's still a charger. It just took it to the next level. So we're very proud of that car. So when we started out to do the SRT, we said we've got to go even further because that car already has so much presence to it. And obviously with, a, with, a, with an SRT product, any, SRT, any Dodge that wears an SRT badge, it has to function. So it's all about maximizing cooling. Um, and we took advantage of that and said, how can we make a face that is just, is, has so much presence? And, and we really, we wanted to, to make the face be as outrageous and um, has as much presence as 707 horsepower does in this car. And I think, I think we did that. Um, we, we've utilized the, the charger tail lamps. We actually have uh, SRT badges that are located inside of it. But you can see here, we've, we've really you know, closed up the, the center area and maximized the lower for airflow. Um, one of the great things about being a designer uh, is being able to spend time in the wind tunnel, and especially with a vehicle like this. As Tim said, 204 miles an hour, there's a lot, of, uh, uh, a lot we have to do in the wind tunnel to make sure that the car has that balance. So on the front fascia, we, we haven't had to resort to a, a, an add-on splitter. We've done it all with just integrating the fascia or the lower splitter shapes into it, maximizing the opening. Um, we've got uh, functional air intakes on the outboard side that Russ will get into some of the details on what those feed. Um, but just this thing has so much presence to it um, and attitude. Um, it really is a menacing looking vehicle. On the, on the hood, um, and we're very proud of the hood. If you, if, you look at the, if you look at the Viper and the center NACA duct with the two air extractors, um, we've, we've also used that same design cue on the Challenger, and now you see it here on the Charger as well, and they're truly functional. This lets in air, runs over top of the supercharger, these exhaust air, and they also help control the downforce with that, with that incredible top speed as well. And there's something really neat about putting your hand over here and feeling the heat come out of it. One of the things I was talking earlier to, uh, I don't know if you've seen a smoky burnout with the Challenger and the Charger will do the same, same thing. As that tire smoke comes through, it comes up under the engine and it just pours out of those vents and kind of gives me goosebumps when you see that. It's kind of a neat thing, uh, kind of like a bull blowing, blowing out his nose. Um, moving down the side of the vehicle, of course, we have the same uh, slingshot wheel, 20 by 9 and a half inch. Um, it's uh, low gloss black here, and we also have the brass monkey finish. And something that we're really, really proud of is the Hellcat badge that you see on the Fender. You're seeing it here for, for the first time. This will also be used on the Challenger. But you know, that's the one great thing about, about Mopar and, and Dodge is that we have these, we, we really um, take advantage of our history. If you look at Roadrunner, the Roadrunner decal, you look at Super B, Yellow Jacket, um, we've always had these, these characters that go along with it. And, and Scat Pack, they're, they're icons. And people, I mean, look at all the people in here wearing Hellcat shirts already, and it's incredible. So we really wanted to celebrate that and let those who know, they know what this is when they see that badge on the car. So you're seeing it here uh, uh, intro today. Um, uh, the SRT also has a unique sill as well on the, on the Charger. And I'm not going to make everyone get up and go to the rear of the vehicle, but please, after, take a look at the back of the vehicle. Of course, we have our new... Uh, uh, racetrack, LED racetrack tail lamp that has this beautiful glow uh, at night. Seamless, you can't see the LEDs, um, wonderful identity to it. But the Charger also has a unique rear fascia on it um, with two uh, exhaust ports on it, um, four inch round loose tips. Our SRT customers like to modify their vehicles, so uh, we give them an option of having a, a loose tip back there. And uh, you'll notice the rear spoiler as well. Uh, one piece spoiler looks very tidy to the rear. Um, it balances great with the, uh, the front fascia as well as far as arrow and just you know, really completes that look. Uh, moving to the inside of the vehicle, um, you're seeing here uh, as well for the first time is a, a black Napa leather interior. It's also available in, in sepia, the color sepia in, 
in uh, the Napa finish. So it's just a beautiful, wonderful uh, leather quality. Um, we also have red, optional red belts that you see here, and I think it just contrasts very nicely. Um, we also have a modified center, uh, center console to package the eight-speed transmission shifter. Um, a new cluster with a seven-inch uh, screen in between. The Hellcat has, has its own gauges. They're red, really, really cool. So after, please come up and take a look at that. 8.4-inch touch screen as well with the performance pages uh, that you can move all of those cool timers and uh, gauges to that center, center uh, seven-inch screen as well. And of course, the SRT signature uh, flat bottom steering wheel. So, uh, so just you know, one last thing I want to mention because I've said this before, over and over. Um, you know, as a designer, you, we try and design vehicles that that have you know this presence. And I've I've said it on. I've got to work on a lot of Dodge products and SRTs, and you know, coming up on a on the expressway or on a traffic light, you know, you want to try and intimidate the the guy in front of you with your car. I think we absolutely nailed it with this car, so we're very, very proud of it. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Russ, and he's going to take you through some of the engineering pieces. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Russ Rudicelli. Uh, I'm luck lucky enough to be the uh, vehicle line executive for all the SRT products, and I get to talk to you a little bit about, about uh, this monster next to us. Um, you know, we, we talk about quick, fast, and powerful. Um, and as Tim mentioned, we're at the top of all those charts on this car. And as you can imagine, that offered um, quite a challenge to the engineering team. I'm very proud of what, uh, what we brought here today. Um, so the engineering story starts with the engine. Um, it's a Hellcat um, supercharged 6.2 liter uh, Hemi engine. Uh, again, 707 horsepower at uh, 650 uh, foot-pounds of torque. Um, Amazing piece. Um, we've got Chris Collin here to talk a little bit more during the question and answer period, but very interesting engine. It uses the basic architecture of all our Hemi products, but 92% of the parts are unique to this engine, including the block, the crank, which is uh, forged and also um, has heat treated uh, journal areas. We have forged rods, forged um, pistons, um, and of course that, that giant supercharger on top. Um, the engines manufactured in our Saltillo uh, engine plant where all the Hemis are built, but unique to the Hellcat is it actually runs through a 42 minute dyno cycle. So every, every Hellcat motor gets a 42 uh, minute dyno cycle before it's shipped off and, and installed in the, um, in the car at, up at Brampton in Ontario. Um, additionally, the car comes uh, with an eight speed manual, or excuse me, eight speed automatic transmission. Um, it's a unique transmission behind the Hellcat. Um, bigger uh, clutch packs and uh, wider gears. Um, so that's kind of the engine compartment stuff. As you can imagine, an engine of that size and, and that power takes a lot of special care and feeding. Um, starting with the fuel system, we've got a unique um, fuel pump in the back. It's a variable speed pump. And we had to upgrade the fuel line to half inch uh, inside diameter. Um, the fuel system can actually pump the fuel tank dry in 13 minutes at, at fully rated power. Um, so we're flowing a lot of fuel. In addition, we're flowing a lot of air. Um, we, we discussed a little bit about all the openings and getting air in and out of the, the vehicle. A couple of unique things for the Hellcat is um, the oil cooling system. So we have a separate cooler over here for the oil system. And then over on this side feeds an air to water intercooler. Um, there's two intercoolers on either side of the, the Hellcat motor up here. And it's fed by its own water system separate from the engine cooling system. Um, there's an electric pump that, that'll uh, pump about 11 gallons a minute at, at fully rated power. So we're moving a lot of water to keep the, the intake uh, charge cool um, and keep those power levels up. And that was one of the, quite honestly, one of the, the um, targets we set for the vehicle. A lot of our, our SRT um, customers take the car, take their cars, excuse me, to track days. And uh, so one of our, our design briefs was that the car had to run a 20 minute um, track cycle. Uh, at 100 degrees Fahrenheit and not D-rate. And I'm proud to say that the, the car passes that with flying colors. <laughs> Additionally, the um, car has a unique uh, special brake package. Um, we've got 15.4-inch uh, 15 rotors on the front, biggest brake package we've ever put on a car. It's a two-piece uh, floating rotor with a center aluminum hub uh, to drop the weight. We've got six-piston Brembo calipers on the front and uh, four-piston uh, Brembo calipers in the back. Additionally, bigger wheels, they're a, a nine and a half by 20 inch forged wheel, and the car comes standard on uh, Pirelli P0s. We offer both a uh, 
a four season and a three season tire. Aerodynamics, um, a, a, big, uh, a big point, um, and we spent a lot of time working on that. With a car you know, that has a, a top speed capability of uh, 204 miles an hour, really had to work on the details. Uh, Mark touched a little bit on the, um, on the front uh, fascia and, and the integrated splitter. Um, in the back, the spoiler is unique, and if you get a chance to go around the back, we've actually added some little, little tricks um, on the kickups um, to improve downforce and yaw. So like all SRT products, we're, we're, li we're speed limited, um, not electronically limited. So we, when we run out of, of power and aero drag, that's what sets our top speed. And again, on this car, it's uh, 204 miles an hour. <clears throat> I think those are the big issues I want to, or the big engineering challenges mechanically. Um, electronically, a couple of unique things for the car. Um, we have uh, key fobs that come in two colors. The black one is, uh, is a 500 horsepower limited key fob, so you can hand that to your friends. Uh, the red one, you get one of those and uh, that uh, gives you the, the full potential of the car, which is a 707 horsepower. Additionally, we have a, 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 what I think is a, a unique feature um, called valet mode. And in that mode, um, you go into the screen, hit valet, it asks you for a four digit code, one, two, three, four, um, and then you hand the car off to the valet or somebody that's gonna change your oil or whoever you don't want the car to have all the horsepower. It actually um, pulls the horsepower back limits you to launching only in second gear, um, only 4,000 RPMs, and you can't turn off any of the traction control or um, you know, speed control things. So then you get back, have dinner, come back, hit the valet mode again, dial that one, two, three, four in, and you're back to 707 horsepower. So those are kind of the high points of the engineering stuff. Um, I think we'll open it next for Q&A. Bring my colleagues up here. Oops, sorry. So this is uh, automatic only, no manual? Correct. Automatic only. Yeah. And uh, when you got, you, you got extra speed out of it uh, because of aerodynamics? Uh, yeah. Was that the basic body versus the Challenger, or is it uh, because of what you did with the, uh, with the Hellcat uh, add-on differences? I, it, the, the, the added top speed versus the Challenger is all in, in aero drag. The, the body's a little bit longer. Better and that allowed us to uh, reduce the drag. The drag on this car is about 12% lower than the, um, than the Challenger. That's where that extra top speed came from. Can you say what's the, the life cycle like for a vehicle like this? Would it be in the market for say two years or could it be longer than that? Is it the so, sort of thing where you know, you know you're only gonna sell a certain number of them, so you don't yeah, wanna... I'm, I'm glad you asked that question, because that was one thing I wanted to absolutely clear up today. I don't know where the rumor came from about there's gonna be 1,200 units in the life cycle of the Challenger. Absolutely not true. We've never said that. I don't know where it came from. It's taken on a life of its own. That's not true. I don't know what the life cycle's gonna be. I was very clear when we launched the Challenger. You know, if you missed the first muscle car era, don't miss this one. I don't know how long this can last, um, so take advantage of it now. So we don't know how long we're gonna build this car, and I can tell you it's not gonna be 1,200 units. That's for sure. Beautiful car, guys. Looks amazing. Um, is it only going to be in uh, rear-wheel drive? Yeah, that's correct. Only rear-wheel drive. Yeah, I had a question. Um, uh, price point and who is the who is this car manufactured for or so we haven't targeting? announced pricing on this yet on the challenger hellcat it's 59,985 with gas guzzler uh, we'll have this pricing out in a few months when do you expect to put this on sale uh, I think we said q1 q1, q1 of next year Uh, Tim, what's, what's the ordering been? Have you opened ordering yet on the Challenger, and what kind of interest have you gotten from dealers? We have not yet opened ordering on it, um, but I can tell you that the consumer demand has been off the charts. Um, I get a lot of emails from not just dealers, but from customers saying, where do I go? I want to leave my money right now, even though they can't order the car. Um, so the demand seemingly from the dealer feedback and from the customers that I get emails from is uh, Fantastic. We, we will open up for ordering this month. 
Uh, well, this doesn't come out until the first quarter of next year, so it'd be a few months before we open up for this. Hi, uh, Mark Phelan, Detroit Free Press. A uh, couple of questions. If it's on sale in the first quarter of next year, uh, what model year will it be? 15. So 15, thank you. And you cited a couple of other performance uh, figures, but I missed a 0 to 60 if you gave that. Uh, what's the time on that? 3.7. Thank you, Mopar 360. Um, I was wondering, what's the cubic displacement from the 6.2 to the So it's 6.2, so what is that, 371? Where's Chris? <laughs> yeah, where's Chris? <laughs> I don't feel bad now. I think it's like 370, 371. I gotta get my calculator out and do a conversion. On. So can you talk a little bit more? You said that there isn't a business case, but I imagine there is some sort of a business case for it, unless you're saying you're losing money on these. Um, no, I'm, a, I'm absolutely it. not saying that. I mean, the, the thing about the business case was more of a joke than anything else. Um, you build cars like this. You build Challenger Hellcats. You build Charger Hellcats. You build Vipers. You build cars like that to build brand. You build cars like that to be halos for the brand and what they can do for the overall brand. If you look at I mean, just take Challenger as an example. The Challenger Hellcat has literally taken on a life of its own. Our PR people will, will jokingly tell you that 10% of the internet has been dedicated to Hellcat conversations. Um, that has a trickle down effect to the entire model lineup. Um, we have incredible interest right now in our Scat Pack Edition 485 horsepower Challenger. Now, I think that that car would have caught on eventually. People would have figured out that was the absolute sweet spot in the lineup for a performance buyer. But the Hellcat accelerated that. The Hellcat brought that to the forefront of a general market. Cars like Hellcat, Chargers, and Challengers also open up the brand more to the general market and that conversation. You know, I talked in the beginning about how Ron Burgundy got people talking about Dodge. Then we went to the auto show, showed the new cars. Then we launched Hellcat. The conversation kept growing. We've never in the six years that we've been tracking Google Analytics or that Google Analytics has existed, we've never had a brand that's been number one search brand for the month, ever. So that conversation of stuff like this obviously has, I say not a traditional business case, but there's obviously a benefit to the brand. Hi, Tony Swan. Uh, getting back to small picture again, uh, you mentioned zero to 60 and 3.7. What do you anticipate I hear Tony's for a quarter voice, mile? Assume, where are they? Here I am. Ah, oh, okay, sorry. What do you anticipate for a quarter mile time? Uh, quarter mile certified NHRA with street tires, bone stock, 11.0. The elephant in the room with the enthusiast community is where else is this engine going to go? Can you comment at all on possible 300s, trucks, any uh, other platforms it might migrate to? So a couple of people asked me if we we're going to put it in the dart. No. <laughs> um, right now it's in the Challenger and the Charger and that's all we're doing with it and that's all we're going to talk about. Except for the dart. It's not going in the dart. I, a question on the 6.2, is it built at Saltillo at the, uh, on the separate line, the 6.2? Actually, it's a, it, it's a combination. It's built on the line, and then there's a spur line that takes it off to do some special operations. I'm humming. And then back on. But what's unique, again, is the, is the dyno testing there. None of the other Hemis get that. Okay, then from the enthusiast community, question number two, will we see that engine available through Mopar with plug-and-play electronics? So guys with 2010s and 8 Challengers and Chargers can put a Hellcat in and go have fun? We don't know. We don't know yet. Um, Tim said we don't know. TBD. <laughs> don't know. I mean, personally, I want to build every single car I can before we start looking at things like that. I mean, that, that rumor about the 1,200 cars really, really upset a lot of people. I mean, we purposely price this car at $59.95 to put it in within reach of the average performance enthusiast. Now, you can price it at 30 grand, but if you make it 30 grand and you're only going to build 1,200 and nobody can get one, what's the point? Um, so I want to get as many of these cars out on the road. I want to get as many people talking about Dodge and excited about Dodge as possible. Thank you. 
uh, question. Uh, you have a drag coefficient on it? Um, it's in the package. Marty, do you know what the drag coefficient is? So, yeah, so that, that's in the package. It's actually an improvement over the outgoing car, and it's about 12% better than the Challenger. You have, a, you have a mile per gallon figure on it? Not yet. Hasn't and, been certified yet. And just last question, uh, these look like uh, pedestrian safety fangs on the front. Are you, you taking this to Europe? Uh, no, the, the plan is not to go to Europe. That's all, all about aero and, and keeping enough downforce on the car at high speeds. What's the uh, weight and how does it compare with the uh, Challenger Hellcat? I know the Challenger. I'm going to have to ask it's you to... About a, it's about 100 pounds heavier than the Challenger. It's 45-40. Uh, 45-60. 45, I missed it by 20. I, I would, my, my expert back there. I wouldn't worry about the weight, though. I mean, if you listen to the quarter mile times, it's actually two tenths of a second faster than the Challenger. That extra weight helps to get off the line. Hello, testing. Hello. Um, uh, ballpark pricing? Don't know yet. TBD. Yes. To uh, follow up on an earlier question, can a Hellcat only refer to a large displacement Hemi, or could Hellcat migrate to, say, a four-cylinder, you know, a, a uh, high-pressure turbo four-cylinder, mm, no. or even a six-cylinder? I mean, is Hellcat only going to refer to V8s? No, and I'll tell you why, and Chris can probably chime in on this. Um, every, every engine project that they do, they put a code name on it. You know, there's a Tiger Shark, there's an Apache, there's a Hellcat. Um, so the name actually was the code name of the engine when it was in development. Obviously, it's perfectly fitting because it was one of the last piston-driven aircraft engines. It was supercharged, and you had to actually qualify it to fly this plane. And, you know, it's got a lot of history behind it, so the name was really cool. And then the name perfectly fits the car, especially the sound of the car. So it started to gain some momentum, and that's why we decided to use it. It was originally supposed to be just the code name of the engine and not something that we would actually use in our marketing. But I think you'll agree, it fits perfectly. The logo is amazing. I expect these logos to probably be stolen um, when we launch the car. Um, but for that reason, you couldn't put it on another car or another engine because the new engine development would have its own code name. Larry. The, I, I may have missed this in the presentation. You had to... Uh, use that special duct on the Challenger to get enough air into the supercharger. Is it just hidden on this? Yeah, it is. It's, it, we can look at it clo up close later, but there, it, it's fed right just behind the, the air duct. We didn't have to go through the headlamps on this one. Yeah. Um, one more question. What's the weight distribution? I bet I can get within 1%, but I'm going uh, <laughs> to... 54.46? 54.46. Let's see go. how good I am. You got it. Is yeah. that it? If you mentioned it earlier, I may have missed it. I'm curious what the miles per gallon is on this. We haven't what kind announced. of fuel efficiency it, it We has. haven't announced it yet. We haven't announced it. We haven't certified it yet. But, but I did tell you that I was hoping that the Challenger was going to get 20 on the highway. We have lunch. Thanks for joining. We appreciate your interest.
Thank you.